Donald Trump has triumphed over 16 challenges and millions of dollars used against him to emerge as the presumptive GOP nominee. But the fight continues on the Democratic side. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton leads Senator Bernie Sanders in delegates and in the popular vote, but Sanders continues to pull surprise victories over her in primaries, such as Indiana recently. And Delegate Rich California is just around the corner. Question remains, is there a viable path to ultimate victory for Senator Sanders? Let's talk about it with Jeff Weaver, his campaign manager for the presidential bid. He joins me from Burlington, Vermont. Jeff, isn't it surprising that with 17 candidates months ago, the Republican races decided the Democrats with three candidates is down to two and is undecided? Well, it is a little surprising, Larry. I think uh, people thought that the Republican race would go much, much longer than the Democratic race. But, you know, a part of that had to do with people uh, discounting and underestimating uh, Senator Sanders and his ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the secretary. And I think uh, they're regretting that they underestimated him at this point. What is that ability? Well, look, he has, a, and I know he, you've interviewed him in the past and have known him for many years. You know, he is, uh, uh, and I hate to use this word because it's overused, I think, in politics, but a sort of authentic voice for working people and middle-income people. He has spent his entire career uh, fighting for those who don't have a lot. You know, when he started the race, he was at 3% in the polls. He had no money. He had no campaign organization. I wasn't even on the staff then. All he had was a piece of paper from the FEC. And as he traveled around the country and drew thousands and thousands of people, you know, up, upwards sometimes of 30,000 people to his rallies, uh, people heard his message. Uh, he was able to raise a tremendous amount of money on uh, the Internet, which we can talk about because he's, he's really revolutionizing the way you can raise money in politics. Uh, people came to him. They heard a message that they had not heard from a lot of people before, but that they were yearning to hear. Uh, and his support just swelled in a way that no one could have imagined. All right. Is the option now you, you must have a con you can't go into the convention with more delegates than Hillary, right? Well, there's two categories of two categories of delegates, Larry. There's the pledged delegates. These are delegates that you win uh, by winning caucuses and primaries. And then there's this other category of unpledged delegates, or sometimes called super delegates, and those are made up of party leaders and elected officials. So among the among the pledged delegates, the ones that are voted on actually by people, uh, the senator is less than 300 delegates behind uh, the secretary. And we're going into a bunch of states that look very favorable for the senator. We have West Virginia on Tuesday. Uh, California, which has 475 uh, delegates, is coming uh, in early June, along with New Jersey and a host of other states. Uh, so he can substantially close the gap with the secretary in terms of pledge delegates. And the truth is, is that neither person is going to get there to the convention with enough pledge delegates to win. So when we get to the convention, it's going to be up to the superdelegates to decide who is going to be the winner. Uh, and those superdelegates, uh, in our view, are really interested in one thing, and that is winning in the fall. And the polling has been very consistent, Larry, that Bernie Sanders, for months now, does much better in, in public polls against Donald Trump than does Secretary Clinton. When do you start, for want of a better word, pitching them? Well, well we have been in communication with superdelegates from the beginning. You know, we have a regular newsletter that goes out. We have a lot of telephone conversations uh, with uh, superdelegates, many of which are initiated actually by the superdelegates themselves. But I think you'll see a much more intensive uh, outreach effort as we uh, end the uh, part of the process where the public votes uh, and to demonstrate that, in fact, the Senator Sanders has going into the convention the momentum uh, that he has closed the gap with Secretary Clinton. And I think at that point, a lot of people are going to want to take a second look at S Senator Sanders and really make a, an assessment of the race about who can not only retain the White House, uh, but help elect, uh, elect the Democrats up and down the ballot. Uh, Nate Silver, who is wrong about Trump, <laughs> but has been right about a lot of things, says that Hillary's chances of winning California are 95 percent. What do your polls tell you? Well, I would say that her, uh, this is winning California. I would say her chances of winning California are uh, considerably uh, less uh, than that, based on the polls, public and private polling that I have seen. Uh, the race in California, at one point when, when we first started in this campaign, were, was quite uh, wide. I'm sure the secretary had a 50 or 60 a point lead. Uh, most of the polling I've seen shows that lead uh, well down into single digits. Uh, Senator, is gonna, Senator Sanders is going to be spending a lot of time in California, uh, and I think that's a state where he can do uh, very, very well. He said the primary system is rigged. Rigged how? 
Well, there are a lot of impediments in the primary system for people uh, participating. Uh, for instance, a lot of states have closed primaries, which means that independents can't vote in the Democratic primaries. And what you see then is you see huge numbers of people who are democratically aligned voters, people who vote Democratic all the time, uh, and are disproportionately young people who are closed out of the primary and caucus system. Uh, these closed primaries, you know, serve to protect the sort of party insiders and party leaders in those states, uh, but really uh, dampen the ability of the party to broaden its base uh, beyond those people who are regular, regular participants. So uh, Senator Sanders' goal in this race has been to broaden the base of the Democratic Party, to bring more people into the political process. Uh, he has done that. Millions of young people have come out for him, similar to the way they came out for uh, President Obama. Uh, and his view is that we should be encouraging that by opening up the primaries to allow independents uh, to vote in the Democratic primary process. Uh, that's just one way in which it is rigged. The other, the other way is, that, you know, the, the, the existence of these superdelegates who are, uh, are unattached to any kind of voting, uh, uh, hundreds of them who support Secretary Clinton, in fact, endorsed her before they even knew there was a race that was going to go on. Uh, and so a candidate, who, an establishment candidate who has strong ties with superdelegates can basically start the race with a 15 or 20 percent uh, advantage before the first, the first vote is cast. So the senator would like to see a system that's much more tied uh, to the will of the voters in the various states uh, to ensure that the, the nominee of the Democratic Party uh, reflects the views and aspirations of rank and file Democrats. The Internet is not something seen. It's going on. All oh, There's millions of people on it right now. Uh, and Bernie has used that. Tell me how. Yes. <clears throat> well, we have used the Internet in a few different ways. Uh, one, it, as a way to uh, reach out directly to voters, to have conversations with voters uh, without any intermediaries, including the media. You can, you can, you can go right into people's computers and, and talk with them. Uh, that's one way in which uh, he has done it and done it quite remarkably. Uh, it's been used as an organizational tool, Larry, to organize volunteers around the state. We have hundreds of thousands of volunteers all across the country uh, and to organize them and to let them know what's going on, how they can participate, get them to come to meetings. And then the third way uh, that he's used the Internet is uh, for fundraising. When he started this race, there was a lot of pressure on him to have a super PAC to raise big dollar contributions uh, from various sources. And he refused to do that. He said, we're going to raise it uh, the old fashioned way, small dollar contributions. He has, he's received over six million contributions online uh, from over two million people, averaging about twenty seven dollars a piece. Uh, he is you know, no one thought that he could raise the amount of money that one needs to run a competitive presidential campaign using that source of money. But the truth is he's raised over $200 million from people all across this country uh, in a tremendous outpouring. And what he's demonstrated is that you can run a national campaign without begging rich people and special interests and Wall Street uh, for money. And so that's really, in that way, he has really revolutionized uh, the way one raises money uh, for a presidential campaign. Okay, you got the uh, situation of Trump and having a problem with the Republican apparatus. The key people in the Republican Party are divided. The Bushes are not going to the convention. Uh, Romney is not going to the convention. The Speaker of the House is not going to announce an endorsement. He says he's not ready yet. How right. is Bernie doing with the Democratic establishment? How, whatever that is. Well, I, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How is Bernie I, doing? I, Obama's not for Bernie. I mean, apparently he doesn't say anything, but he, he, he's presumed for Clinton. How is Bernie doing with the apparatus? Well, I think his relationship with uh, key Democratic uh, players is much better than Donald Trump's uh, uh, relationship with, with those in the Republican Party. Uh, clearly, the Republican Party, much of it is uh, uh, terrified by the fact that Donald Trump uh, is the nominee. Uh, and, and rightly so. I, you know, as you know, he's a, he is, uh, to put a mildly a loose cannon. Uh, he, he holds and expresses views, I think, that are repugnant to large numbers of people, uh, not just Democrats and independents, but also uh, Republicans, uh, and is really, you know, in a position to sort of tear that party apart. Bernie Sanders, you know, has uh, been a member of Congress for over 20 years, has caucused with the Democrats, uh, was the uh, Democratic chairman of the Senate Veterans Committee, uh, is now the Democratic ranking member of the Budget Committee in the Senate. Uh, so he has a long history of working uh, with Democrats, uh, he is known by the Democrats. Clearly, Hillary Clinton is the, is the candidate of the Democratic establishment. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination, I think you'll see uh, establishment Democrats lining up behind him. All right. We mentioned that 
uh, you mentioned that Trump is a loose cannon. To the Democrats, isn't Bernie a socialist, which is somehow a well, bad word in America? Well, Bernie is a democratic socialist in the sense that uh, you have a democratic uh, socialist uh, governments in uh, Western Europe. Uh, you know, he believes in universal health care. He believes in a living wage. Uh, he believes in, that everybody should have opportunity regardless of where they uh, started from in life. Uh, he doesn't think that the uh, wealthy elites in this country should call all the shots. Uh, so it, the truth of the matter is, Larry, is that his views really are aligned with uh, the views of most Americans. Most people uh, want to live in a vibrant democracy. They want to live in an economy uh, where if you work hard, you can succeed. Uh, that's not set up against you. Uh, they don't want to live in fear that their jobs are going to be sent overseas at any moment to people who are making starvation wages. Uh, they don't want the, the planet destroyed by global warming. So Bernie Sanders' views are very, very much in line with the views of most Americans. Hillary Clinton reached out to the senator, saying that there is far more that unites us than divides us. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, certainly Hillary Clinton is far, far preferable candidate uh, to Donald Trump or anybody, frankly, that the Republicans have put up in their, uh, on their side of the uh, ledger. The, so in that sense, that's true. Uh, there are big differences between the two candidates. So Bernie Sanders supports uh, making public colleges and universities tuition-free. The secretary does not. Uh, Bernie Sanders wants a $15 minimum wage. The secretary uh, uh, supports a lower uh, a minimum wage. Uh, Bernie Sanders uh, opposed for years and years these bad trade deals with sent jobs overseas. The secretary has supported almost all of them uh, in terms of uh, uh, fossil fuels. You know, uh, Bernie Sanders was, has been a vocal opponent of all of these pipelines bringing fracked oil, uh, fracked gas uh, all around the country. The secretary has not taken that position. And in fact, the secretary of state promoted the export of uh, fracking technology to countries around the world. Uh, so there are, you know, that's just a few of them. They're, you know, he supports a single payer health care system. She does not. Uh, you know, she is a much more hawkish foreign policy than he does. Uh, so there are big differences between the two of them. But in terms of Comparing the two of them to Republicans, yes, she's head and shoulders above the Republicans. There's no doubt about that. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be calling on you again real soon. I hope so, Larry. And nice give, to our, be with you. give our best to the senator. I certainly will.